Well, Mr. Speaker, thank you. And again, I want to thank my colleague from Iowa who has been a great partner in finding the right sweet spot here uh, as we move forward on more telecommunication policy that will help us uh, allow these great innovators and inventors to uh, go out and serve our constituents and offer competition in the marketplace and, and not just because they're small be snuffed out by a, a government that requires things they can't afford to, uh, to do uh, and, and take money away from innovation. They still have to, as you know, follow all the, all the laws and all the protections and all that. It's just this reporting requirement that seemed pretty onerous. And in fact, obviously the FCC thought it was when they first came out with their rule. We concur with that and extend that exemption on out. I'd also like to say, Mr. Speaker, uh, I'm really proud of the bipartisan work that Mr. Loebsack, myself, and others have done uh, on our subcommittee. This marks the fifth piece of legislation that we've brought to the House floor in this Congress in one capacity or another. We've passed the FCC consolidated reporting uh, legislation, Mr. Speaker, unanimously across this House floor. Uh, and this is designed to uh, deal with that antiquated statutory requirements on reports that aren't needed, oftentimes aren't completed, and yet cost money uh, to uh, uh, taxpayers and those who pay fees. Um, so we have a consolidated report that's designed to simplify that process, save taxpayers money, and decrease uh, the federal bureaucracy a bit. That's over in the Senate now, Mr. Speaker. We passed a FCC process reform legislation uh, that we reached bipartisan agreement on as well. I think it passed unanimously through the House. Mr. Speaker, and this is really important because we're trying to shed a little light on the FCC's activities and bring fairness and transparency to the Federal Communications Commission so that the public, the consumers, the stakeholders all have a better opportunity <clears throat> to see how policy that will affect them is being deliberated and considered or even what's proposed. Um, that bill is over in, in the Senate. And then we dealt with the issue of what we call the dot-com act to make sure that when uh, the contract runs out on how uh, the internet naming uh, uh, agency and all works and, and all the IANA and ICANN pieces, that uh, consumers are protected and will have, continue to have a free uh, internet, free from government intrusion, free uh, and, and as it has been to innovate and create this enormous change. That passed the House, I think, with over 380 votes. And the, uh, the Spectrum Pipeline legislation actually was part of the bipartisan budget agreement we passed at the end of last year, so that's now in law, as a matter of fact. And this marks, uh, as I say, our fifth initiative to uh, try and uh, help this great sector of our economy continue to expand that provides access to the world, provides access to commerce and jobs in a rural setting. I can't tell you how important this is in a district such as mine, where people now <coughs> can locate in a smaller community in a rural environment with a great lifestyle, connect into the Internet, and be able to conduct commerce and uh, grow jobs. And so, Mr. Speaker, this is a fine piece of legislation, represents really solid work, and is really important uh, to a lot of startup and small companies across our country. We need to help grow, expand, and be the next competitor and the next, the next one to really move up and give us all as consumers more competition and better service. So, Mr. Speaker, thanks for your indulgence. I thank my colleagues on the other side of the aisle. With that, I yield back the balance of my time and ask for our members uh, from both sides of the aisle to join us in bipartisan support of this legislation, which, by the way, Mr. Speaker, is also supported by the administration. With that, I yield back.